Gas exchange is a complex process. To support the absorption of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide, about 5 to 8 liters of air per minute are brought in and out of the lungs. And about 3 tenths of a liter of oxygen is transferred from the alveoli to the blood each minute, even when the person is at rest. At the same time, a similar volume of carbon dioxide moves from the blood to the alveoli and is exhaled. When there is tachypnea, a condition in which patients breathe at a faster rate, usually in case of respiratory distress and impairment of respiratory system due to other causes, even more air pumps in. Sometimes even more than 100 liters. Due to compromised function of lungs in COPD or other respiratory disorders, the CO2 washout will be slower and hence there will be retention of carbon dioxide. The normal level of carbon dioxide in blood is between 35 to 45, that is our PaCO2. The increased level of carbon dioxide in blood can cause neuromuscular dysfunction and often lead to poor prognosis. The condition is called CO2 narcosis. One of the hallmark features of carbon dioxide narcosis is a depressed level of consciousness. In this video, we will look at the causes, pathophysiology, diagnosis and complications along with some key features of carbon dioxide narcosis. So, let's get started. For understanding CO2 narcosis, we need to understand hypercapnia. Hyper means excessive and capnia is derived from the Greek word kapnos means smoke, or carbon dioxide. Together, excessive amount of carbon dioxide in blood is called hypercapnia. The amount of CO2 dissolved in blood is called PaCO2 or partial pressure of carbon dioxide in blood. An increased level of PaCO2 in blood above normal is hypercapnia. So, what's normal? In arterial blood, the level of PaCO2 is between 35 to 45, anything that's above is hypercapnia. It has two types in general, acute and chronic. We have explained hypercapnia in detail in other video, check it out. For now, acute hypercapnia is the driving force behind CO2 narcosis. So the etiology of CO2 narcosis is depend on the cause of acute hypercapnia. Let's understand the etiology of CO2 narcosis or causes in detail. Although the etiology is complex, it's useful to categorize the potential causes into three categories, decreased minute ventilation, increased physiologic dead space, and increased carbon dioxide production. Number 1. Decreased minute ventilation. First, what is minute ventilation? Minute ventilation, also known as total ventilation, is a measurement of the amount of air that enters the lungs per minute. It is the product of respiratory rate and tidal volume. The minute ventilation is the respiratory rate into tidal volume. Now, what are the causes of minute ventilation? As we know, the central nervous system controls respiration. More particularly, the respiratory centers in the medulla. The central respiratory center in the medulla integrates feedback from multiple inputs into a respiratory drive that controls our minute ventilation. Anything that affects the central respiratory center can have an impact on minute ventilation. Minute ventilation is raised in cases of sedatives medication overdose, stroke, and hypothermia. Although the medulla functions to control the respiratory drive, many peripheral nerves and respiratory muscles are needed to perform respirations. The decreased respiratory neuromuscular function can decrease minute ventilation. Also, deformity of the thoracic cage can impact tidal volumes, therefore decreasing minute ventilation. Next, increased physiologic dead space. Increase in physiologic dead space is one of the cause of hypercapnia. So, what is physiologic dead space? Dead space represents the volume of ventilated air that does not participate in gas exchange. The two types of dead space are anatomical dead space and physiologic dead space. Anatomical dead space is represented by the volume of air that fills the conducting zone of respiration made up by the nose, trachea, and bronchi. One can see an increase in the value of physiologic dead space in lung disease states, where the diffusion membrane of alveoli does not function properly, or when there are ventilation or perfusion mismatch defects. 
Third cause of hypercapnia is anything that increases CO2 production. This group is more likely to contribute only partially to hypercapnia and is not usually the primary cause, but it can occur in conditions that increase metabolic rates. Environmental exposure to areas rich in carbon dioxide, such as volcanoes or geothermal activity, puts patients at risk for carbon dioxide poisoning. It can lead to sepsis, thyrotoxicosis or fever. Now, we know what causes CO2 narcosis, it's time to understand its pathophysiology. Carbon dioxide is fundamental for blood circulation in the brain. Changes in PaCO2 in blood are thought to cause changes in the pH of the cerebral spinal fluid. Changes in the pH of the cerebral spinal fluid cause smooth muscles to relax or constrict. When PaCO2 levels rise, cerebral blood vessels dilate. When they fall, cerebral blood vessels constrict. So, smooth muscle relaxation in patients with CO2 narcosis causes dilation of cerebral blood vessels which increase cerebral blood flow and potentially increasing intracranial pressure, which results in a depressed level of consciousness. But here, patient baseline PaCO2 is important to consider in the development of CO2 narcosis. Normal individuals do not experience alterations in consciousness until PaCO2 is greater than 75. Patients with chronic hypercapnia may not experience alterations in consciousness until PaCO2 exceeds 90. According to current understanding, hypercapnia alters neurotransmitter levels involved in consciousness.